So I don't even have to see the comments from the previous video to know that there's going to be about a million questions on this extraordinary saw. I'm willing to bet that there's probably none of you or very few of you out there, not, not say none, but very few of you out there that have ever seen anything like this. And you probably won't see another one because it's that rare. This saw is called a takedown saw and it was developed and sold to the United, Forest, United States Forest Service smoke jumpers. And there's not a lot of information out there on that. They're super, super rare. Of crosscut saws, they're probably about as rare as you're ever going to find. I never thought that I'd ever even see one or even touch one. And now I'm very fortunate to have one in my own collection, thanks to my subscriber Chris up in Washington State who contacted me with this magnificent saw. So the story of it is that his grandmother was an artist and she liked to paint murals and scenes on crosscut saws. And she had quite a collection, and when uh, she'd passed away and the family was going through her things, Chris came across uh, several crosscut saws, and this was one of them that she had had in her storage, uh, anticipating someday painting on. What it is, is it's a um, six and a half foot Atkins. You can see right here, it's a number 52, silver steel. And then you can see the U.S. Forest Service logo. It's a, it's a um, uh, felling saw. You can see the back of it right here. You can see just that slight curve in there. There's so many things about this saw that make it unique. Um, primary, the most noticeable thing is, of course, the really ingenious cam locking system there that locks it together. So why would you need a three-piece cr three cross-cut saw? Well, it's for, for size. They do, smoke jumpers have and still do jump with these crosscut saws, but to be able to put it into that small pack you saw there uh, makes it a lot easier. And it's just a brilliant, brilliant design. To have this saw in this type of condition, I haven't touched it. It looks like it came, when I'm looking at it, it looks to me to be brand new. Uh, I don't know that it was ever used. Whoever, maybe someone used it, but whoever had sharpened it uh, before it came into my possession, was a, a master filer because it is it's 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 as near perfect as I've ever seen. It's a beautiful job, and to have something in this condition complete with the original handles, and with the original case, to me is just a treasure beyond treasures. I mean, wh how, when would you ever cro come across something like this or find something like this? I have um, been doing a little bit of bucking, just messing around with it. I've been saving this. I've had this for several months because I wanted to include this in this um, in the new back to basics video series because it was just something that was just so special um, and so unique and so interesting that i could not wait to share it with you guys but i'll show you also so the length is beautiful it can be used have, being able to have it with put it into two pieces like that it can be used as a one-man saw or snap all three together and it can be used as a three person or as a two person saw but you can see here here's the original case with the forest, U.S. Forest Service logo right there and you can see the the takedown saw. So also in the case it came with these handles right here. So and you remember a while back I did a uh, in the blacksmith forge uh, this is the this is the one when, it, when Chris sent it to me it was missing let me focus there it was missing this little pin and I forged that pin out of an allen wrench that's this is the handle that I was uh, was working on. It came with both of these handles and it also came with this really clever tool that we use right there, of course, to lock those cams into position. USFS stamped right on it right there. That's the first time I'd even noticed that. Very, very unique. This is not something, as far as I understand, and my, to, my, to the best of my knowledge, that would have ever been for sale to the general pump public. And certainly never anything that I've ever seen for sale uh, in any of the Atkins catalogs. And the fact that they use their very best saw, I mean, this is the finest saw, one of, if not, you know, next to a Royal Chinook, those two would, I would consider to be the finest crosscut saws ever built. So to have it in such a usable six and a half foot length in, in new condition, all complete, uh, to me is just, it's priceless. It's absolutely priceless to me. And I, I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart, Chris. That was a very kind, very kind gesture uh, to, uh, uh, make me a steward over this. 
So I will, uh, uh, we'll be using this here in, in the next parts. We're going to be doing some bucking and we'll get into some more cross cut technique stuff. But this here, the handle on it is, uh, this is a Wanda's handle. This is off my granddad's cross cut saw and this is an original Atkins handle. So this would have been a handle that it would, it would have possibly come on a saw that wasn't converted into the takedown configuration. Who did it? Who machined it? I don't know. It was it done by Atkins or was it done later by a contractor or did the US Forest Service, do they do it themselves? I just don't know. But the way the machining is done on those cams was very clever. Clever. The inside portion comes to a, a, a taper so it won't, uh, they won't fall out. They can't come out and they're peened in. It's just a, um, such a brilliant, a brilliant design. How this ever got out of the hands of the US Forest Service and into private hands, I don't know. I just don't have any history of it other than Chris's grandmother acquired it somehow. Because, you know, I've been to the crosscut filing class, you know, school that's put on by the US Forest, Forest Service at a Nine Mile Ranger Station. And I assure you, they don't let loose of their crosscut saws. They understand what a treasure they are and they know that they're irreplaceable. And they hold on to them like grim death. So I don't know how, I just don't know. I wish I knew a little bit more of the history on it, but uh, it is a, um, I've cut with it enough to know that it is a, it's one of the good ones. It's a very special saw. So, and of course, uh, I know the question's gonna come up. So have you named it? Uh, Back, uh, tradition kind of dictates, or a lot of the old time fallers or fellers uh, would name saws, and the old crosscut filers. I've read as much. I've read a lot up about them, and, and and done as much research on these old saws as I can. They all, many of them, would say that every once in a while there was a saw that was really special. It just um, I don't know why. Um, it just uh, it was just a really really good one, and many of those saws were named, as I said, and they were always given women's names. And uh, men would request them that were working in the timber camps. You know, they wanted so-and-so or they wanted so-and-so because she was a good saw. So I have chosen a name for this saw that I think is uh, appropriate. And, well, her name is Trinity. Well, of course, she's three pieces. So we'll see you guys on the next video.